broadcasting from the hills of East Tennessee. You're listening to Justified Radio, where each week we look at one of today's issues through the lens of God's Word. Justified Radio, it's where life meets the Bible. And this is Justified Radio, and we welcome you to our our podcast and our YouTube show. Yeah, this Who'd is thought? everything we've got, isn't it? <laughs> Who would have thought that you could have both at one time? But David, hope you're having uh, hope you're having a good year oh, so I far. I am. Yeah, this is. I'm looking forward to this coming year because it's got to be better. It's it it's got to <laughs> oh. Doesn't it? I mean, yeah. What else is there? Yeah, we're ready to we're ready to see things start turning around and uh, looking for the church to be able to do great things as we emerge from all this. Well, well, that's right. And that, you know, we we've talked about it. Nothing will be the same. It'll be different. It's always going to be different. It'll be different. But the opportunities that we have. Yeah. And so we we look forward to that. But I noticed, David, over Christmas, I was watching some of the TV specials and everything because we couldn't get out with family like we used to. So you're kind of, you know, stuck at home and everything. But there was a common theme over a lot of the movies I was watching. One I was watching was uh, It's a Wonderful Life. Mm -hmm. Remember that with Jimmy Stewart? Yep. Um, Clarence, the angel who uh, is trying to earn his wings. And uh, another show that I was watching was I watched uh, Dolly Parton, uh, a Christmas show about her family growing up. And, and it made reference to her family, that her belief that their family had a guardian angel and, and everything. And so I thought today, David, what about angels? They're, we're surrounded by, by a lot of claims about angels, you know, movies that include angelic beings. Mm-hmm. But what does the Bible say about angels? Uh, a whole lot of different things than the movies do, to be honest with you. Oh, uh, no? Yeah, I think I think some of the movies might miss the mark a bit. Um, but angels are a reality. They are real, and the Bible reveals quite a bit about them. It really does. And that's what's uh, the, the glorious thing about it is even all the things that we see in the movies and, and even in the secular world talk about angels and thought about angels – well, the Bible does give us a lot of information about angels. It, it really does. And so so today we thought we'd just sit down. We've been listing out some some questions that people have about angels that we've been asked or are or, or familiar with, and we thought we'd just start talking about angels. And so let's start, Dave, with, frankly, what are angels? What are angels? Well, they're created beings. There's no doubt about that. They're, they're not eternal. We're going to be touching on that. But there's a, there's a lot of things that angels aren't that some people kind of attribute to them, but there are a lot of things that angels are that we miss. They're created by God. Now, does the Bible give us a very clear indication of when they were created? Uh, I think we can, I think we can nail it down to, to, to a span of time. And and I think we can't. Okay. And that's, and, I, and, I, and, I, and that's to, why there's two of us yeah, instead of just one of right. us doing this. Yeah. And that's, and, and to be honest, you've got more to back your belief than I do. Well, you know, if you, if you look at the Bible, you know, the clues we have is, is we know that we know that we see angels first appear you know, in Genesis, we see Satan and we'll talk about fallen angels, right? Yeah. But, but Job talks about the fact that angels were there and witnessed creation of the earth. And so we, we know that angels were created sometime, sometime between, you know, the beginning of creation and the seventh day. Right. Now, here's, (laughs) this is why I love you. I gave you seven days. You did. You gave me seven days and I won't take any of them. Because I believe that angels are outside the realm of time. And, I, and, and again, like I said, Phil has a lot more uh, to be able to back his belief than I do. But I, I think neither one of us can make a dogmatic statement absolutely certain that we know when angels were created. No, in, in fact, if we really wanted to confuse people, if they just wanted to sit down on one of our just sitting back yeah. talking about it because... You say, well, I, I don't know when angels were created because of they're outside of, of time as we know it. Mm-hmm. 
Mm-hmm. And then if we were, to, and I'll admit, if we were to talk about the creation of the earth, you're going to say the earth was created in seven 24 hour days, so six 24 hour days, Lord rested on the seventh. And I'm going to say, huh, I can't say that for sure because we don't know how fast the days were right. back then. Right. Be- and, because of these same concerns of, same of time and, and relativity. Right. Now, I believe, and, and again, I always want to make sure I emphasize this. I believe I am a six day creationist. Yeah. 24 hour days, six of them in succession, um, a day like we see today. But I'm also outside the normal thought because I believe that angels live in an existence that knows no time. Right. And, and see, and I, I believe that I believe the Lord created the earth in six days. The Bible says that I don't know how long the days were right. because of gravity, but I believe the angels were created within whatever that time was were created within those six days. Right. So. And the reason Phil adds that because of gravity in that is because both of us have read a lot of things lately, I think that really help you understand that even light is very much affected by gravitational effects. You know, if you, God is not constrained by time, right? Time is a gift for humanity. And so, you know, it's, it's really when God gave us that gift of time, because other than for us, time has no, no meaning whatsoever. Right. Yeah. It, uh, time. I mean, when you, st- well, okay. If any of you want to read a book, get William Lane Craig's book called Time and Eternity and read the first chapter and then go take an Excedrin. <laughs> and read it slow. And read it slow because if you try to read it fast, you'll drive yourself insane. But, but, but you know, what we see is time. Gravity has the great effect on it. You know, gravity affects a lot. And, and things move more slowly away from gravity. And so th- this has been proven that if you take an astronaut, send them up into space, and you have people here on Earth, that even though it's minuscule around the Earth, if you have a watch on your hand, it moves s- slower in space. Right. Yeah, it, it does. I mean, that's, you, you can't argue that because it's been physically proven. Right. But now you've got to always emphasize the fact that it's so... It's such a small difference. What is it? It is right here. Yeah. Right. You got to be really precise in your measurement, and they are, and they're able to now. And and that's why you can you can say, and we've discussed this, which has nothing to do with angels, but it's interesting, and and it's our podcast. Right. <laughs> and don't be offended by that. <laughs> we're just joking, but but you know when we talk about astronomers, say we're looking across the universe, we're looking to the beginning of of creation, and it is so many, you know, billions of years. Right. And, and then you mentioned that, you know, you really don't know exactly because you're not sure what the gravitational pull on the other side is. That is, is making these, these things you're seeing, they look like they're, they're a lot older than what they are simply because of gravitation on the other end, slowing down the light. The, and then, too, don't ever lose sight of the fact that when God created things, he did create things in a mature state. Right. And that Adam and Eve were, were probably in their what we would see as a body that had matured to about its 30s. Now, I don't know. You know, I'm just we, saying we, that. That's an arbitrary the, the, number. Well, really. the, the 30s, you know, we say a lot of things yeah. concerning the 30s because of Christ. But because it, it of just Christ, seems and like also, and but also because it's really a proven fact that in your early thirties, you're probably your most virile, your most beautiful, most strength. I'm double that now, and I I'll have to agree that that's true. Oh, I'm falling into depression, even yeah, I know, as, <laughs> even as you speak. Let us move on. Okay. Yeah. So, but the point of it is, is that angels. Listen, angels are not the same as God. Right. God is eternal. Right. God has always been. We, we, we can't comprehend it, but we know it's true. The God we worship is presented in the Bible as the creating God who has made everything. There's nothing that has been made, whether it's the angelic realm, the physical realm, wherever it is, if it exists, it has been made by God. Okay, so, so angels are created beings. Right. They, they hadn't always existed because they're created. But now that they're created, 
they will exist forever. Right. Someplace. Someplace. Right. And there's only there's only really two alternatives. Uh, one's heaven, of course. Oh, ultimately, in, ultimately, in the end, yes. Right. And then the other's hell. Right. In complete and absolute eternal separation from God. Okay. So, so David, when God created angels, aren't angels really? Um, aren't they just? Aren't they just? Man, after they die, that become angels. That, and now, sadly, that's what a lot of people think. Well, you know, you're right. I'm not looking at you. I know. I'm, it, I'm looking at you confused, I, like, I, really? But I know you're right. Right. A lot of people think that. We die, we become angels. That's absolutely 100% biblically wrong. And, and this is not a bad thing that is wrong. Don't, no. Listen, don't get sad because your loved one is not an angel now. Listen, if your loved one was was a child of God, they're better they're, a they're, lot they're better, better than an angel now. Yeah, higher than the angels. Now, I mean created for a time lower than the angels, but now reigning with Christ high above the angelic yeah. realm. So angels were created, but they're not humans after they die that they become no. angels. No. Uh no, uh, now angels will exist eternally just like you said from this point forward they were created. Uh, there, we know at least a third of them are going to be in hell, consigned to hell in the lake of fire forever. Yes. Um, but now don't ever forget this. This is where people get despondent. But remember, if a third of them fail, there's still two thirds of them on the right team. Well, and, and we shouldn't be afraid anyway, because, because our God is all powerful. Yeah. We, we have nothing to fear. If you're a child of God, you have nothing to fear. If Satan could have his way with us or his demons, David, we'd already be dead. Yeah, <laughs> I, I, a fellow said once he was talking to, uh, I think it was, I think it was John MacArthur. Somebody was talking to him. They were uh, talking about angels, and they said, "Well, I believe that, uh, I believe the devil can take your salvation away from you." And, and MacArthur or whoever it was said, "Really? So you think that they can take your salvation?" But then you say that you're saved, so really you're living on the grace of the devil rather than the grace of God? See the error in the thought there? Yes. Satan can't touch your salvation. If you're a child of God, he has no power over you. No. Now, he can influence you. Yes. Let's not miss that. Uh, the, the, the demonic realm or the fallen angelic realm, they can influence you, but they cannot have you. Right, and so... So well, let's talk about let's let's talk about some of the, the the nature of angels because you know when we talk about God and and sometimes many people equate angels as right up there is God yeah and some yeah. people make the mistake of going so far that, that they almost worship angels well, yeah a lot of people uh, worship angels and we've got to be very careful that we don't well you you see a lot and and I don't you know you don't want to offend anyone but but you see a lot of of symbology of angels mm -hmm. uh you know you've got an angelic sun catchers and and people think about their guardian angels and and they focus on the angels instead of focusing on on god right. on the creator of the angels right and there again we can learn a lot from angels because angels whole focus is god right it's not them it's not their rank it's not their place it's not their privilege their whole focus is serving the God who made them. Right. But and and you know, even John, listen, if if this is you, you know, don't do it, but but at the same time, I just finished reading the Bible for the year. Um, chronologically this year, but so I finished Revelation and in Revelation, you know, there's a couple of times that John that that he is so overcome by what the angels are revealing to him concerning heaven that that he falls at their feet. Yeah. And of course, the first thing they do is they say, huh, not us. Yeah, get up. <laughs> That's right. You, you yeah. don't worship us, you worship the Lord. Yeah. So, but but when we talk about the nature of God, you know, David, we, we spew out the three omnis, the three alls all the time. Yeah. That God is uh, omnipotent. Omnipotent. He's all powerful. Omnipresent. Omnipresent. He's everywhere. And omniscient. Knows everything. He knows everything. What about angels? Do, do angels have any of those capacities? No. Not a one. No, because I got, again, they're created. Now, do they have great knowledge? Absolutely. Do they have great power? Absolutely. Are they able to be in different places at the same time? No. No. 
No, and that okay, and there's there's the thing. Sometimes we we ascribe more power, especially when we talk about it seems like demons, fallen angels. We give them more power than what they they actually have. Yeah, but now don't, but now let, let's not don't miss what we're saying. Angels do have great power. But there's a big difference between great power and omnipotent power. <laughs> well, no, that's right. Right. And and we get an example. Listen, we get an example of the, the, the power of angels. And and the Bible is divided, and David's mentioned this. We have we have holy angels and we have fallen angels. When when Satan rebelled against God, he took or one third of the angels followed him. Right. Revelation twelve four. You can that, see that. That's right. It, it, yeah. Okay, so, so one one third of the angels, and so when we read about angels in the Bible, when we read about the power um, and the things like that, it can be applied both to holy angels and fallen angels. Right. And so you can see the power of the angels in that. You know, we see it at one time an angel kill one hundred eighty five thousand, I believe it was of yeah. of uh, Assyrians uh, Assyrians outside of. Uh, Jerusalem, were they outside Jerusalem? Right, out, outside, right outside Jeru- Jerusalem. Jerusalem. In one night. Yeah, they'd surrender. They'd surround it. Surrendered. They'd surrounded Hezekiah and, yes. and uh, Jerusalem, and they. I mean, Hezekiah, they're scared to death. And in one night, and what I always try to emphasize this when I'm on this, a little unnamed angel, right, 185,000 crack Assyrian war people, and he does away with them in a night. Right, and so so we see the power when Sodom and Gomorrah were destroyed. It's angels. Uh, when we look to Revelation and and we look at the the judgment brought on the earth, the agents of God's judgment on the earth are angels. Yeah, so they they're are. very powerful. Yeah, their power is limited by God and given by God. That's right. But they are powerful. So, but just they're not. As powerful as God, not omnipotent by any stretch of the imagination. Okay, so we we mentioned the fact that there, you know, we think of omnipresence, we think of you know, angels being everywhere. Not so. There's a lot of angels, but they are bound to be one place at a time, just like you and I are. Right, an individual angel cannot be more than one place at one time. Okay. And then and then the and then knowing everything, the the omniscience. Now, now this one, this one's, you know, this one is understandable, but angels know a lot, don't they? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I mean, greatly far exceeding our wisdom and knowledge, but still, they don't know everything. But sometimes it appears that they might, especially, again, when we talk about fallen angels, and then we we talk about the things like fortune-telling. Uh, you you look at uh, you know fortune telling and things like that. That now sometimes those things are are nothing but a gimmick, right? Uh, you know they're they're just they're just con artists. But at the same time, some of those they they're actually dabbling in dabbling in the in, occult, in, in the occult, the dark arts, yeah. the spirits. Yeah. And the reason and and you know we see fallen angels involved in that. The reason that sometimes that that those who dabble in the occult know so much about you is because they've got someone feeding them the information who who can gather all this information yeah and those could be demons and and certainly could be demons and we we know that it exists because you know seen in the bible uh you know that those things exist but demons have demons have been around since creation yeah at least and so well that's you know and so they have accumulated all of this knowledge yeah accumulated and but you know also we're pretty quick to bear the sin that so easily besets us too and if demons are watching us and we believe they are we show them a whole lot of things that trip us up well yes no that uh, you know we if okay they're one place at a time but if they happen to be that one place they see into our private lives what no one else does. Yeah. Outside of the Lord. I mean, I'm who I'm knows sorry. everything. Yeah, I'm sorry, but if you're sitting around looking at pornography, probably a demon looking at it with you. 
And, and then they turn around and they're able to use that against you. Right. Yeah, I mean, usually pornography leads to acting out that mm -hmm. which you've seen. Right. And there's where the demons can work in two people's lives and bring them together at work or at a bar or wherever. And they end up doing things that ought not be done. And always remember that sin never just affects the person sinning. It always affects somebody else. And that's always. right. And that's right. And, you know, you know, sin, what was it? Sin uh, takes you places that you didn't want to go, keeps costs you, you more than you wanted yeah. to spend. and yeah, keeps you longer than you wanted to stay. stay. Yeah. So, okay. So, so when we look at the nature of, of angels, that they're not all powerful, they're not all present, they're not all knowing. But they are very powerful. Yeah. Okay. What about the the ministries of angels? And let's let's talk about the Lord's angels. Let's talk about holy angels to begin with. What are some of the ministries of angels? Well, you mentioned one. Think back Old Testament, and you get to Sodom and Gomorrah. You see those angels, ministers of God. They go down to Sodom and Gomorrah to get Lot and his family out. Well, that's right. They, they go down to take inventory of the town, if you will, okay. right, to see what's going on. And they just find a place that's full of debauchery and hedonism and sin. And because of that, it's their job to get Lot and his family out of there. Right. And they do that. And they do that. Yeah. And then they turn around and they destroy, or angels destroy, Sodom and Gomorrah. Well, yeah, the, the raining down the brimstone and the things from heaven and, uh, you know, God doing that horrible work. And I'm sorry, but that's... Imagine being there. Right. Or imagine being like Lot up, you know, up on a, a probably a little bit higher elevation, looking down and seeing this happen. I mean, wh what a horrible event! Right. But this was angelic work. But then you also see in Hebrews eleven, uh, where is it? Verse four. We looked it up earlier, I believe. Um, you see that angels have very specific work. No, I'm sorry. It's it's Hebrews chapter one, verse fourteen. Sorry, I wasn't thinking. But it talks about there. But which of the angels has he ever said, and this is verse 13 in Hebrews chapter 1, but to which of the angels has he ever said, sit at my right hand until I make your enemies a footstool for your feet? Well, that's a rhetorical question. The answer is to none of them. He's never said that. Right. But these angels, are they not all ministering spirits sent out to render service for the sake of those who will inherit salvation? Okay, so, so some of the things angels do would be, well, first of all, angels worship the Lord. Right. Angels carry out the bidding of the Lord, his will, holy right. angels. But one of the things angels do is angels minister to us. Angels serve man right. within God's will. Right, within God's will. That Okay. What else would we see angels doing? Well, we, we see angels, and in fact, the New Testament uh, word for angels is Angels are messengers. Right. Angelos means messenger or angel, as just transliterated, but it does mean messenger. Um, the, they're messengers of God. Have you ever been in a situation where suddenly you realized something that you shouldn't, didn't have any knowledge of before? Let, let me give an example. You're going somewhere and suddenly you have this understanding that better be very careful. Um, I don't know how to say it any better than that. Most people would say that's the Holy Spirit, and I, to that I'll wholeheartedly agree. Okay. But these angels are all ministering spirits to those who will inherit salvation. I have inherited salvation, therefore I know based on that verse that angels are in some way caring for me at God's behest, at God's... Right. But they're still there. Well, let's okay. Let's let's stop there, man. Because you 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 actually you, you say something that's very interesting. Because many people claim guardian angels, mm -hmm. and certainly the Bible, just like you were talking there, the Bible speaks of the truth of the existence of guardian angels. Yeah. Okay. We can go back to to Matthew. There's a verse in Matthew that talks about uh, children in particular having particular angels. Mm -hmm. Okay. That that stand before the throne of God for them. But at the same time, when we talk about these guardian angels, David, the verse you referred to in Hebrews 
makes it seem like the guardian angels are for God's elect, God's children only. Right. That, I mean, that, you know, there's some point, it seems, this is something that we, boy, I hesitate to say this, but I'm going to say it. His, his, this is David speaking This now. is David. This is not <laughs> Phil. Okay. <laughs> but, you know, Catholic thought is that you come to an age of accountability. Okay. Mm-hmm. And that's about 12 years of age. They okay. go through confirmation. Uh, they're, you know, brought in whatever. Well, we believe, I think, that we believe in an age of accountability. Ab- absolutely. But we don't name it as 12. No. It might be, it, it's, I, I don't know when it is in some people. It, it's it's whatever, and, and it may never occur. Right, and some it doesn't. Um, um, the, the age of accountability being at that point that that you can knowingly sin against God. Right. That up until that point that that you're not knowingly sinning against God, you're not guilty of committed sin. Right. And there are, I believe in the children, at different ages, different maturities, it seems like, they reach that age of accountability. Uh, I, I believe that there are, age-wise, there are adults uh, that because of their special needs, they never reach what we would call an age of accountability. And so I believe that when they die at whatever age, uh, that they pass from this life into uh, the Lord's presence. I do too, but now we also got to make sure that we emphasize the fact that even in those situations, you do not neglect to evangelize, to talk to that person. About no, the no, Lord. no, no. I mean, you know, don't don't just well up. No, listen. There, there, are, there are people who believe. I mean, you know, who who would teach you that that until you're confronted by the gospel, you can't re- until you're confronted with Christ, you can't reject Christ. That people who have never heard the gospel, if they're in some faraway jungle somewhere, if they've never heard the gospel, God holds them not responsible for for their sin and that they'll go to heaven. And David, that thinking would have us believe that the greatest evangelistic work that we could do to save the most souls would be no evangelistic work. Don't go. Don't go, and and that way they can can be saved in their ignorance. Right, and that's just wrong. No, it's, it's wrong because the Bible is clear in Romans. Paul is clear that, that, listen, we're all born with a conscience that testifies against us, yep. that we have on some level, everybody knows right and wrong and that God's going to hold them accountable. Yeah. Uh, you yeah. know, based on what they know is how I believe it. Right. Only a fool would say there is no God and the Bible makes it abundantly clear in the new Testament that it is this God with whom we will have to deal with. Yeah. We I'm, will stand in his presence. Well, that's right. O- otherwise, you know, to, to save the most people, the best thing we do would be shut down our churches and not do anything. And just let people live in their sin, but live in their sin ignorantly, and that's not true. Right. That that's heresy. Yep. Okay. So, angels they they minister to us. There are guardians, angels. Right. Angels ministered to Christ. Yeah. When he was on earth. Yeah, and I mean, in different occasions. Yeah. You remember in the temptation, he was ministered to by the angels after he'd been tempted by Satan well, that's for forty right. days. Uh, angels were at, you know, we talk about the first and the second advent of Christ, the first coming, the second coming of Christ. Well, angels were at the first, and certainly angels will be at the second. Oh, boy. <laughs> uh, yeah, the second one. I'm, I'm thankful I'm going to be behind them. I, I hear you. I, I think. Uh, but, uh, but anyway, but the first advent, see, I, we've talked about this a little bit before, but I believe that glorious Shekinah bursting forth of the angels was what the Babylonians saw when they said, I, the, star the star that they're seeing yeah, through yeah, the east. Remember, uh, I don't know if you, you probably do, but, you know, the 21st of December, uh, Jupiter and Saturn. Remember, I tried to get pictures out of my camera. Okay. I, could, I, I frankly could see uh, Saturn, and I, I could see four moons. Yeah. I've never done that before. Oh, it was great. So, it was great. But a lot of people said, oh, that's the Christmas star. That's the great what conjunction. No. I'm yes. sorry. That was a, it was a beautiful astronomical sight. But, no, this event when these angels suddenly at least my opinion burst forth to praise our lord that was that star rising out of jacob that heavenly glow that those babylonians said look the star possibly i'm just saying this possibly they might have said the star that daniel told us about right and i think that's why they knew about it was because of daniel and and even if the star at Christmas at Christ's birth was the great conjunction, not saying that it is, 
we can't, you know, we can't deny the fact that when the wise men, they made it to Jerusalem two years later or thereabouts, that there was another light that, that led them to the child Jesus. Right. Yeah. And when that first star appeared, they said, ah, oh, there it is. Let's go. They knew where to go. The, the, because Probably they knew because the king would be in yeah, Jerusalem. And, and, yeah. And, the, and the, they even knew, uh, you know, what land to go to that because was the, the prophecy was that star will rise out of Jacob. And so Which they went to Israel. Herod and they said, where's the king of the Jews? Yeah. We've, we've come to worship him. I mean, why wouldn't they go to the palace? Why well, wouldn't they go to the capital city? Well, sure, that's where they'd go. Right. But Herod didn't know. No. But uh, so 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 they ministered to Jesus and, and they'll accompany Jesus, like I said, at the second coming. Yep. Um, angels, do they transport believers to heaven? I, I don't, I'm not, well, I don't know. Okay. I, the Bible kind of gives an implication that they accompany those who will go, and I think they do, right. okay? But let's not lose sight of the fact that Jesus said, it's important that I go away. Right. Because I'm going to go prepare a place for you, and if I do that, I will come again to receive you unto myself. The most important person at the moment of death is Jesus, not the angels. Well, that's right. And and no no it. denying that, but right. And I believe that angels will be there. You know, I've and I've said this to to families that when you've been in the room of death, that 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 it is my belief that unseen angels are are there. Mm -hmm. They're there. They're there at the time of death to transport the soul of a child of God to transport them into the presence of the Lord. Yeah. I've, I've told families, and I, and I say this humbly, and I say it also because I believe it, but I think angels are there in very magnificent ways at that time of death. But when death does come, I think I always say I believe that suddenly they came to attention and there was a parting of the angels because the Lord was there. Yeah. And I believe that. I believe that with all my heart. Uh, it matter, uh, it makes me look forward. At, this sounds crazy, but it makes me look forward to death. Well, we should look forward to death. Yeah, I mean, Spurgeon said, you know, get to the place where you anticipate death with great joy. Well, and, and you know. A Christian can do that. A, a Christian should do that. Yeah. Uh, you know, along that subject, I, I think that I think that that a Christian that is facing death, that their testimony at that point carries more weight than any other time in their life. Yeah. And there are many Christians that they face death with with the hope of eternity in such a way that those around them that are lost, that they are amazed at at the faith they had and that it changes their li their lives yeah and you don't want to miss it too the family that's there with the one who's dying well, that's have right. a tremendous opportunity of influence in that realm that you'll never ever have outside that and then i have seen those who have faced death in such a way that you wonder whether or not they truly had the hope of heaven in their life right because they they fought it so hard yeah Death is a fearful thing to think about. It's the unknown. But a Christian, we, we need not fear it. Yeah, because we're the only ones that really, it, while it is, it does have a lot of unknown qualities about it. We know a lot about it, too. And yeah. death is going to be, be in a moment, unless the rapture happens. But at the moment of my death, I'm going to be, for the first time, able to see the face of my Savior and my God. Yes. You know, we always... <laughs> You know, you unless the rapture, we always throw the rapture in there, well, don't yeah, we? Because that's what I'm hoping for. But <laughs> well, I, I am too. But I believe in a rapture. David believes yeah. in a rapture before the tribulation. But, but we we're always careful not to talk about everybody has an appointment with death that it's inevitable. We throw that in the rapture in there yeah. just so someone doesn't accuse us of. Well, yeah. I mean, just don't always forget this. I look forward to death, but I dread it. Well. <laughs> Well, it's, it's, uh, I had an uncle I, I loved very much, and he was facing death. And uh, 
he made the statement. I'll never forget it. Uh, and he was a godly man. And, and he looked at me and he said, you know, said I've never died before, which was, certainly was apparent. Yeah. He said, I've never died before, but I don't think I'm afraid. And he wasn't. That's a good and, thing. and that's about as good as you can hope for. Yep. David, there's more that we can talk about. And we're going to. But not today. Right. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Thank you all for being with us. I hope uh, uh, hope you did have, as Phil said, a great Christmas. Hope you're going to have a great new year. Um, please always remember, yeah, we're coming out of a bad year. We don't know what's ahead, but we know who's ahead. Amen. We're Amen. moving toward our God day by day, moment by moment. We have opportunities to serve him like we've never served him before. Make this year the year that you say on New Year's, this year I'm going to serve my Lord with all my heart, all my soul, all my strength. With everything I have, I'm going to be a Christian this year like I ought to be. Amen. Well said, David. Amen. Hope you come back. You've been listening to Justified Radio, where life meets the Bible. You can find us on the web at justifiedradio.org, where you can submit questions, subscribe to our podcast, and find links to our social media. That's justifiedradio.org. Until next time, thanks for listening.